All right, in this video, we're gonna do number two from the 2022 Calc AB exam, um, and it's kind of the area volume problem, so let's see what it has to offer. Uh, let f and g be the functions defined by f of x equals the natural log of x plus three, and g of x is x to the fourth plus two x cubed. The graphs of f and g are shown above, but I put them below in the corner. Um, intersect at negative two and at x equals b, where b is greater than zero. Um, and so for the first part, we want to find the area of the region enclosed by the graphs of f and g. So what I've done, I need to find b, right? So I uh, graphed both of them. I found the intersections. Obviously, one of them is at negative 2, 0, because we were told x equals negative 2. The other one is at 0 0.781975, and I'm going to store that on my calculator as b. Um, so here's the work for that. f of x equals g of x gives negative 2 and approximately... 0.781975 equals b, and now I'm just going to refer to b throughout because I've already defined it. So to do area, I just have to do top takeaway bottom on the interval. So that's going to be the integral from negative 2 to b of the top function is the natural log function, so that's f of x, and then the bottom function is g of x, and then dx, and now we need to find that value, so it's calculator. Um, I use the calculator page. You could also use bounded area, which uh, thinking about it would have been faster, but I've stored F, I've stored G, I did the integral, I get 3.604, so approximately 3.604, and that's part A. All right, nice. that's pretty straightforward um, as far as area goes. Let's look at the next part. For negative 2 to B, let H of X be the vertical distance between the graphs of F and G. Is h increasing or decreasing at x equals negative 0.5? So it's going to be important that we get the top and bottom curve correct here. Um, for the area, we already had to work that out, so we know that the natural log is on top. Um, here's a picture of the distance, right? So we're looking for the distance. That's that vertical line that I just drew down there. That's the distance. So it's really h of x is just top takeaway bottom. So h of x is f of x minus g of x. And then the question is, is h of x increasing or decreasing? So we're going to find the derivative. We're going to find h prime of negative 0.5. And it's calculator, so we're just doing it on the calculator. Um, so I get h prime of negative 0.5 is actually exactly negative 0.6. It's not an approximation. That warning there, though, um, is that the domain might be bigger than... Uh, domain of the derivative might be bigger than the domain of the original which is true because when you take the derivative of natural log, you put a variable in the denominator. So it does change the domain, not relevant on this problem, but it is a good warning. So I get h prime is negative, which means that h is decreasing. So I'm gonna write up, since h prime of negative 0.5 is less than zero, the vertical distance between f and g is decreasing at x equals negative 0.5. All right, let's take a look at the next part. So, the region enclosed by the graphs of f and g is the base of a solid. Cross sections of the solid taken perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Find the volume of the solid. All right, so this is uh, area, volume with known cross sections, right? And also keep in mind, we already know what b is from part a where we had to solve for it. So we're allowed to just bring that forward with us. Um, so to find the volume with area of known cross sections, we just integrate, sorry, volume with known cross sections. What we want to do is just integrate the area of a cross section. So we have to work out the area of a cross section. Well, that's the cross section in the xy plane. Um, and on that base, we're going to build a square. The area of a square is side squared. So if one side of the square is f of x minus g of x, the area is f of x minus g of x quantity squared. So areas of cross sections are really, volumes of, why am I messing that up? Volumes with known cross sections are important and you should definitely review that before any AP exam. Um, so squares are side squared and then, you know, you can have all kinds of things, equilateral triangles, semicircles, um, described, uh, described cross sections where it's like a, a rectangle where you know the base is 10 times the height or something like that. All right, to find our volume, we need to integrate this. So the volume is going to be the integral from negative 2 to b of our area formula, which is f of x minus g of x quantity squared, and then dx, calculator question. So I just punched it into the calculator. Um, calculator gives me 5.340. So I'll say this is approximately 
5.340. I go three decimals no matter what. Um, even if the last decimal is a zero, I like to be able to look at all my numerical values and be like, yes, I use three decimals. So that's why I'm putting a zero there. You don't really need it, but I would recommend it. All right, next up. A vertical line in the XY plane travels from left to right along the base of the solid described in part C. So that's just picture a vertical line and just move it through the region. Um, that's what's happening. Um, the vertical line is moving at a constant rate of seven units per second. So it's moving left to right at seven units per second. That's like a dx dt situation, right? Because a vertical line has equation x equals, I don't know, 10. That's a vertical line. It's moving, so dx dt is seven. We want to find the rate of change of the area of the cross section above the vertical line. So remember what we're doing here is we have this. This is in the xy plane. And on that segment, we build a square. So it comes out of the xy plane. It goes into space. Like if you drew that segment on your paper, that square that I just drew or tried to draw would be perpendicular to your paper. So it would just be coming out of your desk or whatever. Um, so we're trying to find the rate of change of the area of that cross section above the vertical line with respect to time when the vertical line is at x equals negative 0.5. Okay, so we're trying to find the rate of change of the area of the cross section. We know the area of the cross section because from the previous part, we said that the area of a cross section is just gonna be the quantity f of x minus g of x, that's the side of the square, and area is side squared, so squared. Now, what are we trying to find in this problem? We want the rate of change of the area with respect to time. Right now, the area is a function of x, not a function of time. We are looking for dA dt, and we know by the chain rule that dA dt should be dA dx times dx dt. So if I can find dA dx when x is negative 0.5 and multiply it by dx dt, which we know is 7, that's going to be my answer. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So dA dt is going to end up being, at x equals negative 0.5, uh, a prime of negative 0.5 times 7. And it's a calculator question, thankfully. So I had the calculator find the derivative of a of x at x equals negative 0.5, negative 1.32455. Then I just took that and multiplied by 7, because I just have to get the numerical value. So dA dt here is going to be approximately negative 9.272, and that's my answer. That's the end of this question, so I'll be back in another video to do more of them. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.